This video helps to resolve a scientific controversy about changes in the abundance of animal life with depth on mesophotic reefs in the Caribbean. Coral reefs are well explored to the depths of standard scuba diving, which is 30 meters or about 100 feet deep. But below this depth is a range called the mesophotic zone, where light levels decrease to darkness from 30 meters to 150 meters, or about 100 to 500 feet below the surface. The plants and animals that live on reefs at this depth are poorly described. One way that scientists have studied this reef zone directly is to use technical diving, which involves divers breathing specific mixtures of gases or rebreathing those gases. One research group used these methods to study Caribbean mesophotic reefs off the Bahamas and the Cayman Islands. We'll call them the Tech Diving Group for the rest of this video. Their studies were limited to only the top half of the mesophotic zone because this diving method does not permit deeper diving. Also, because of the constraints of technical diving, their deepest dives were short, on the order of 20 minutes, and with only one of these very deep dives per day. Despite these constraints and short working times, the Tech Diving Group considered their surveys representative and reported a surprising abundance of sponges in the top half of the mesophotic zone, with sponge abundance increasing with depth. Here is a summary graph of what the Tech Diving Group reported, with depth on the y-axis and sponge cover on the x-axis. The reefs they studied increased from average values of about 20% of the bottom covered with sponges at 30 meters to about 80% cover of sponges at 90 meters. That is a lot of sponges. It's not clear what 80% cover of sponges looks like because photographs or video of these locations have yet to be published. The data from the Tech Diving Group were based on notes of visual surveys by the Tech Divers. The Tech Diving Group went on to make two interesting claims. First, that sponge abundance continued to increase deeper into and to the bottom of the mesophotic zone. This means that sponge abundance continues to increase above 80% cover in the deepest half of the mesophotic to 150 meters at depths that they didn't survey. Second, they claimed that this increase in sponge abundance happens on all mesophotic reefs in the Caribbean, again on reefs that they didn't survey. Together, the hypothesis the Tech Diving Group put forward is called the Sponge Increase Hypothesis for Mesophotic Reefs. Well, these claims are perfectly fine from the standpoint of the scientific method, because they can be tested by other research groups. And unlike many hypotheses, the Sponge Increase Hypothesis is very specific. It says that sponge abundance increases with depth through the mesophotic on all Caribbean reefs. So, if it can be shown that sponge abundance does not increase with depth on any mesophotic reef anywhere in the Caribbean, the hypothesis is falsified, or shown to be false. Falsifiability is a cornerstone of the scientific method. Our research group set out to test the sponge increase hypothesis for mesophotic reefs in other parts of the Caribbean. Our work was published in the journal Coral Reefs in 2019, and this video uses data from that paper. These data were obtained not from technical diving, but from a remotely operated vehicle, or ROV, an underwater robot that can take videos and high-quality photographs as it moves over the bottom, controlled by a ship above. We tested the sponge increase hypothesis using over 1,100 photographs from 58 ROV dives off of Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the Flower Garden Banks in the Gulf of Mexico. 
Of these three locations, the ROV dives in Puerto Rico spanned the entire range of the mesophotic zone from 30 to 150 meters, so this video will focus on those dives. Percentage cover data were collected by projecting 25 points on the photographs of reef bottom and recording whatever substratum or organism was under each point, with the total depth divided up into 10 meter bins. What did these photographs look like? Here are examples moving upward from deep to shallow. Here's 183 meters depth with the green and red laser points indicating a distance of 10 centimeters. Invasive lionfish are present at this depth, but the bottom is mostly exposed limestone. The same at 158 meters, where there are some white sea fans. At 107 meters, we see encrusting sponges and pink encrusting algae. At 86 meters, branching sponges, encrusting algae of the dark and light pink kind, and reef building corals. At 71 meters, even more branching sponges. At 57 meters, sponges, corals, and green seaweeds. And at 35 meters, the same, with shallow water gorgonian species appearing as well. When all the photographs were analyzed from the mesophotic reefs off Puerto Rico, the data looked like this. Now this is very different than what the tech diving group reported in two important ways. First, the mean cover of sponges was a lot less. The highest means reported from Puerto Rico were less than the lowest means reported from the tech diving group at their shallowest depth. Second, and more importantly, sponge abundance only increased to a depth of about 90 to 100 meters, and then decreased. This means that the sponge increase hypothesis, the claim that sponge abundance consistently increases with depth throughout the whole mesophotic zone and across the Caribbean, is false. Now, you would think that the issue would be settled, but the tech diving group continues to claim that the sponge increase hypothesis is correct and that the data we published are not reliable because of distortions in the photographic images that were used to generate the benthic cover data. We reject this criticism, of course, and to further demonstrate that the sponge increase hypothesis is false, the remainder of this video will show video clips across the mesophotic from three tracks off the coast of Puerto Rico. Additionally, the same year that the ROV dives were made, in 2016, we also recorded video that spanned the full mesophotic zone from the manned submersible Idabel off the north coast of Roatan Island on the other side of the Caribbean. So, what follows are four clips, three from different ROV tracks off Puerto Rico, one from a submersible track off Roatan, beginning at 160 meters depth and rising in 20 meter increments to a depth of 40 meters at the top of the mesophotic zone. The point of all this, of course, is to see with your own eyes the abundance of sponges as you travel from the deepest depths of the mesophotic zone towards the surface. You will notice that the video is grainier than the high quality photos that were used to generate the benthic cover data. What the video provides is a broader visual field to evaluate the benthic cover in the mesophotic zone. Benthos on the limestone reefs of Puerto Rico are remarkably similar to those of Roatan. 
At depths of 140 meters and below, sponges are only encrusting. hundred and forty meters. Now if the sponge increase hypothesis was correct, sponge cover would be between 90 and 100 percent at this depth. But as you can see, most of the limestone reef is completely exposed. To reduce overall length, video segments are sped up to 1.5 times normal speed. At 120 meters, we begin to see the first examples of emergent sponges that grow away from the substratum. one hundred meters.
Haiti eaters. Sixty meters. Forty meters. What is clear from looking at the video footage is that the sponge increase hypothesis is not supported. Sponge abundance on these mesophotogriefs is not nearly as great as reported by the Tech Diving Group, and sponge abundance does not continue to increase with depth beyond the maximum Tech Diving depth, but decreases in the bottom half of the mesophotic zone. Interestingly, when the sponge cover is divided, between encrusting and emergent sponges, we see that the reduction in sponge cover in the lower half of the mesophotic zone is mostly due to a reduction in emergent sponges. Thanks for watching this video exploring the benthic life on Caribbean mesophotic reefs.